Okay, we are <clears throat> working with our radical packet. Let's get to it. Maybe. Okay, first of all, in order to do anything here, we need to know what our perfect square numbers are. So I'm going to start off with 1 times 1 gives you 1. So 1 is a perfect square number. Okay. 2 times 2 is 4. It's a perfect square number. 4 is the perfect square number. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, I'm not going to write out the times anymore. You need to have this list. 8 times 8 is 64. 9 times 9 is 81. 10 times 10 is 100. Let's keep going. How much do you know off the top of your head? 11 times 11 is 121, and then 12 times 12 is 144. Those are numbers that you should recognize that are perfect squares. <clears throat> You've got 15 times 15. Oh, wait a minute, did I miss one? <laughs> I missed a couple. What, 144 is 12 times 12. 13 times 13 is 169. 14 times 14 is 196. 15 times 15 is 225, and <clears throat> those are the ones, at least in my class, that I want you to be very aware of. We're going to finish it out to 20, just because you never know when you're going to see your next ones. 16 times 16 is 256. Okay, I'm going to write that out, 16 times 16. 17 times 17 is 289, so we should recognize when we see 289. 18 times 18 is 324. Anybody want to guess? 19 times 19. Since my room is empty, I guess I'm not going to hear any guessers. Are you guessing out loud? 361. And 20 times 20 is one you should know without having to even guess. 400. Okay, let's apply that to this. Your packet. Set A. We're going to do the reverse now. So when you have a square root, can okay, let me go back here a little bit. A square, the root is like the side length. So the area of the square is 9. What's the length of the side? 3. So what is the root or the square root of 9? 3. What is the square root of 36? 6, because 6 times 6 gives you 36. Square root of 144 is 12, because 12 times 12 gives you 144. Set B, square root of Joe times the square root of Joe. <clears throat> I'm actually going to go down to this one first, and then we'll go back to square root of Joe times square root of Joe. If you work this out, square root of 9 times square root of 9, a lot of you will do this. 3 times 3, and then you're going to get 9. But let me show you something. Square root of 4 times the square root of 4 is, let's see, 2 times 2, which is 4. Huh. <clears throat> let's try square root of 16 times square root of 16. Oh, what does that equal? 4 times 4. 16. What do you see happening? Square root of 9 times the square root of 9 is 9. Square root of 4 times the square root of 4. 4. Square root of 16 times the square root of 16. 16. Square root of Joe times the square root of Joe. Joe. Uh-huh. Square root of 7x times the square root of 7x. 7x. It's like a square and a square root, kind of when I say undo each other. Set B, oh my gosh, there's a square root and a square. They might undo each other. If you were to write this out, if you square anything, like 3 squared, if you were to show your work, wouldn't that be 3 times 3? So here if I were to show my work, it would be square root of k times the square root of k. But oh, wait, didn't we just do that? Yeah, k. Okay, so in a way, it's inappropriate for me to say this, but here I am saying it. The square kind of cancels out the square root. The square root of math squared, your square cancels out your square root. Math. It's the same as the previous. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, big scary stuff inside, but I'm squaring it. All that is doing is like canceling out your radical. So my answer is what's underneath. Notice how what's underneath the radical is not changed. I still have an a squared and b to the fourth, c to the fifth. All this little two did was take care of the radical. Set D. 
Find the perfect square. So 7 is like my root. What is the square that goes with that? Well, what's 7 times 7? 49. 19 times 19. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that one off the top of your head? Yeah, I didn't either. 361. I knew it was in the 300s. All right. This one I'm going to write out. A squared times A squared times B times B. See, this part is what I'm working with. I'm adding, or not adding, I'm multiplying it times itself, basically. A squared times A to the second power is A to the fourth, because when we multiply with like bases, we add our exponents. B times B is B squared, and C times C is C squared. Set E, the square root of X times the square root of X. X. Okay. Moving on. 3 square root 2 minus 4 square root 2. I think on this one I meant to have a plus. Whoops. 3 square root 2 minus 4 square root 2 is negative 1 square root 2. Or negative square root 2. Let me go back to this one. What if it was what I wanted? Plus square root of x. That's like saying I have one squared xylophone plus another squared xylophone, then I would have two squared xylophones. That is just the weirdest phrase I've ever said. Square root 5 plus 3 square root 5. This means I have one square root 5, and now I'm adding on three more. I have a total of four square root 5s. <clears throat> now, here's the kicker. That's why I have a fourth one on here. Y and X can't be combined together. Neither can square root X or square root Y. So the simplifying on this, there is nothing to simplify. Your answer is 2 square root X plus 3 square root Y. Set so F. Square root 3 times square root 5 can be written underneath the same radical. So square root 15. Square root of A times square root of R can be simplified. I don't want to say simplified, but we can write it under one radical, square root 8R. And square root 8 times square root H, square root 8, 8H. And we actually will talk about reducing that 8. That's actually not completely simplified. But for what we're dealing with right now, that is going to be just fine. Okay. Moving on to set... G. Oh, well, now I have it again. Square root of x times square root of x. That is just, you could write square root of x squared, but most of us should be catching on. It's just x. Square root of 2 times the square root of 72 is the square root of 144. See how we use the skill that we had on the previous? I'm just going to slip back here. I took square root of a times square root of r. I write it underneath one radical. So when I write it under one radical here, I get 144. <gasps> but wait, the square root of 144 is just plain old 12. All right, I do the same thing here. I'm going to write it underneath one radical. 18 times 2, deal with my numbers first. I get 36. Now I'm dealing with my x's. Wait a minute, the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of x squared is just x. Set h. Split it. This is like a skill. This would be like uh, you probably have drills or skills that you work on in basketball. This would be kind of like a skill. You're not going to do this very often. Write it out separately. Oh, whoops. Oh. Square root of 7 times the square root of 6. Okay, we're just working on this skill. I want you to realize when you have a radical with several things underneath it, you can split it. It's okay to split it. So now I have square root of 25 times the square root of r. But wait, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of r is just the square root of r. Okay? Set i. Now we're going to simplify. This is a big section. This is a very important section. We'll be doing this a lot, not only in this chapter, but especially in like the last three chapters of our, our textbook, which is... Lots and lots of things. So you really need to know how to reduce a radical. You did do it last year in algebra, but we need a refresher. We need to take and split this. 
You know, kind of like divide and conquer here, or split and conquer. The problem is, we want to use a perfect square number. Okay, we don't want to just split with what, every kid says six times eight. Six times eight, Mrs. Tally. Well, the problem with six times eight is that neither one of them are a perfect square number. Now, a lot of students go, oh, oh yeah, four. Four times 12, which is wonderful. You can use four times 12. But there is actually a bigger number, and you want to use the largest, and I'll show you why. Um, 16 times 3, and a lot of us right now did not know 16 times 3 was 48. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split it, square root of 16 times square root of 3. But wait, the square root of 16 is just 4. So I'm rewriting square root of 16 with a 4, and then I keep my square root of 3. Now, off to the side here, I'm going to show what happens if you do 4 times 12. Square root of 4 times square root of 12 is 2 square root of 12. But there's a perfect square number that goes into 12 yet, so we're not completely simplified. It's like saying you have a fraction and you reduced 50 over 100 to 5 over 10. Not completely reduced yet. This is our 5 over 10. We need to reduce this again. Keep the 2. We don't want to forget them or lose them. Square root of 4 times square root of 3. What is the square root of 4? 2. So I keep this 2. I write a 2 for that. Square root of 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 square root 3. Oh, that's the same thing I originally had. Notice how much faster it is if I know my largest perfect square number. And if you forget, you get to do a lot more work, but you'll get the right answer if you do the math right. So keep that in mind. Think of your largest perfect square number that goes in to your number. All right, I'm going to split square root of 72. Some of you are going, 36? I hadn't thought of that. I was thinking 9 times 8. It'll work with 9 times 8. It'll just take you a little bit longer. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 2 tags along. That's my answer. 6 square root 2. I'm going to split this as well. I'm going to split it actually into three parts. Square root of 9, square root 6, square root x squared. The square root of 9 is 3. I can't do anything with the square root of 6. The square root of x squared is just x. I do not want you to write your answer like this. I need you to write everything that's not got a radical goes in front and the radical goes in the very end. Otherwise, <clears throat> kids will make like this big long line and be like, is the x under or is the x not under? So I'm going to have 3x square root 6. I'm going to split this as well. Square root a, square root b squared, square root c squared. So I have square root of a times b times c. But B and C have to come out front. B, C, square root A. Okie dokie. On to set J. All right, the purpose of point J, or set J, is to say, hey, are these things, can I add them and split it with by adding it? No, I can't. Square root of 16 times square root of th 3 would be square root of 48. Okay, there's, you just have to believe me, it is. When you multiply um, separate radicals, you can write it under the radical with one thing. However, it is not the same when you add, and this is multiply over here. Not going to work. Okay, so this is going to be false. And once again here, square root of 30, and you can do this on your calculator. Get the decimal for this, get the decimal for this, and do the decimal for this, and it will not add up. Okay, so square root of 20 plus square root of 10 does not equal square root of 30. The square root of, um, let's say, 15 times the square root of 2 would equal square root of 30. So this would be a true statement. This one is a false statement. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start a whole new video for K and beyond. <laughs> K and beyond.